share the screen. Okay. Okay, it looks like I can I can share. Yay me. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna stop some things and start other things and see what we can get done in a quick amount of time. I'm sharing it here and I'm going to again have to put this on um uh <clears throat> what's it called on YouTube because I couldn't share it before and I finally figured it out. So this is a good thing. We're going to this, the instructor live session. Week two, you can see by my screen here. Uh, let's go into this one here. And we are going to open the screen musculoskeletal PowerPoint. I've already done a video on this one, as you've probably already seen from YouTube and the announcements, but this is just to follow up on those kind of things. So we're going to open this way up and go like this. Look at that, there we go. Hopefully we're still, sharing screen. I really hope so. I'm only going to do this for a few minutes. We have 62, uh, what's it called, videos here or 62 um, slides, I guess it is. And we're going to go through chapter three, musculoskeletal system. So musculoskeletal is a, is a combined word that means muscles and skeleton at the same time. And basically, it really does talk about the entire system of the sinews, which is sometimes is myo for muscular, osseo for skeletal or bone. And then we also have like different things like ligaments and tendons and uh, discs and things like that. So muscles come in three different flavors, which you will see in the other video. Anatomy and physiology of the muscle system. Uh, recognize the terms. Okay, function. What's the function of the, the musculoskeletal system? It's really, so every single one of the systems, and there's 12, 11 of them, if you count two male and female, that's 12. We have different organs and organ systems. We went through this, I think, before, hopefully you saw that, is we went through um, what is a, a cell and what a cell's made of, of organelles, and organelles are made up of complex uh, proteins and other chemicals, and then chemicals are made up of atoms and molecules and things like that, right, all the way down to atoms and the pieces of atoms. But we go up from there, we have tissues work into tissue systems, right, and, uh, or organs, actually, and organ systems, and organ systems lead to organizations. This is an organ system, right, the musculoskeletal system, okay, works as a framework for the organ system. So framework means it has a place for things to attach to. Uh, muscles have to attach to things in order to be able to pull. It's like kind of a pulley and angle and lever system that we can use. Uh, protects some of the body's organs. Yes, it does. It protects, you know, like you can't grab my lungs or my heart through these because I have ribs and my brain is protected underneath this, you know, uh, uh, bone of, of the skull. Storage of minerals. Yeah, it does somewhat. Um, and hematopoiesis, which means hema. Uh, hema means blood. And uh, poesis is development of, so this is the development of blood, right? Easy peasy, okay? Specialties that are in there. So we have orthopedics. I'm going to go through and just read through this thing so you can understand the vocabulary and understand what the words sound like, okay? Rheumatology. Rheuma means um, fluid. So it has to do with the smooth fluid that's inside the joints. Um, and physiatry, we don't see that one too much in the, in the, in the, in the United States. Sometimes you'd see it overseas or sometimes other more specialist people, physiatrists and things like that. Orthopedists or orthopods, some people call them. Uh, orthopedic surgeon, okay. Rheumatologist, uh, that's kind of the main thing. It's so funny that that's uh, like we have rheumatic fever, which is a fever that can, can affect the joints. And we have a physiatrist, which is a different kind of uh, provider for those, uh, for muscles. Okay, muscles and muscle activity. Musculoskeletal system, the bones. When we're talking about bones, we're going to talk osteo. Okay, so we have osteoblasts, which are the cells that build bone cells. Osteoclasts, the cells that, that break them down. The osteon, which is a place inside the bone uh, where bone starts to develop. Muscles is musculo, uh, musculo, musculo, or myo, myos, and sometimes sarco. So you have to be careful with that one. That's more of a Greek term. Joints, arthro, and articulo. So articulations, uh, in Spanish, articulations. 
right? And ligaments, ligaments, and syndesmo. So syndesmo means to, to meet together. Uh, they, they, they synthesize, right? They're, they're to cut, linked together. Ligament means to tie together, like a ligature, right? Okay, tendons, tendo, tendons attach muscle to bone. Um, fascio, uh, fascia is what's the covering of the muscle. And there's a whole myofascia, which covers kind of all of the organs in there. And then cartilage or chondro. You'll see chondrocytes, okay? There's a great representation of the um, skeletal system itself and the main bones. Look, there's not many, there, there's 206 bones in your body, give or take one or two generally. But look, in this one, this is everything you need to know. And we're looking at skull, clavicle, you guys are gonna talk about that in your next uh, discussion. Uh, vertebral column, it doesn't really expound upon those, but we have the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, the lumbar spine. You've got your uh, scapula, the sternum, the breastplate in here. There's three parts to that we could go over. Different ribs, there's three different kinds of ribs. Um, that'd be uh, barbecue, baby back end, beef ribs. No, actually there's what's called true ribs, false ribs and floating ribs. Okay. And then, um, oh, it does have them there. So it has true ribs and false ribs. And then we have uh, like parts of the sacrum, the pelvis, the arm, the humerus, the ulna, the radius. And, and to know where these are is very, very important in terminology because it's going to give you a, an idea of where things are, of course, in relation to other things. Now, if you look at this little skeleton guy here, the one that's facing us, okay, that's in anatomical position. Notice his thumbs are pointing outward, okay, and he's standing up. Oh, I can, can't leap down there. Okay, so we have different kinds of bones. I've gone over this. You can see the video in the announcement. We'll go past that. Sesamoid, that's like sesame seeds, okay, a sesame seed shape. Okay, osteocytes, matrix, matrix, when we're talking about matrix stuff, we're actually talking about that which those cells exist in. So your blood cells live in a matrix of liquid called plasma. Okay, osteoblast, we talked about osteocytes or cells. Blast is to build. Okay, oops. Clast is to take apart like um, cladicism, think of that word actually. Compact bone or cancellous, we talked about those. Uh, I do a whole thing on the long bones. You can go through that one as well on the other video. Um, foramen or foramina is plural. There are multiple foramina, foramina, foramina. Fossa or fossae, okay, fossae. There is a fossa, you know, the, the suborbital fossa or supraorbital fossa. There are supraorbital fossae, okay. A sinuses and sinus, one sinus is an open space. We have condyles, crests, epic condyles on top of the condyle, a head, so it looks like a head, a capitulum actually, caput, uh, spine, which is a spino, right? a lot of spines you find all over the place, not just the spine in the back, right, there's spines on different, they're uh, on different bones or the iliac spine and those kind of things, so you can look for those. Trochanter is like a pulley kind of thing, and a tubercle, think of like, uh, like a potato, it's a lump, okay, and tuberosity is a smaller lump. Um, axial skeleton, that's the one straight down the middle, includes these parts here, skull, rib cage, and vertebra, but not the pelvis, okay? Cranium, here's all the bones of the skull, one, two, three, four, five, six, there should be a couple more actually, but, uh, so we have frontal bone in the front, occipital bone in the back, parietal bones on the side, maxilla, nasal bones, uh, um, zygomatic, one of my favorite words, and then we have the temporalis, and inside there is the ethmoid and the sphenoid. Um, sphenoid kind of goes all the way across, and I think I'd go over that in the other, other videos as well. Facial bones, a bunch of them there. Rib cages, this is a great picture. Learn these real quick. Um, false ribs and then floating ribs are kind of all considered. And the reason they're called true ribs is each of those ribs have a, have a direct connection to the sternum itself, okay? If it's false, it doesn't. It has to share, as we see here, okay? Uh, vertebral, lamina, all this kind of different stuff. This is a little bit more in depth. I think you can get into those. Cervical spine, cervical, okay, cervical, cervicalgia, neck pain. Thoracicalgia would be back pain, I guess. Lumbalgia would be lower back pain. Um, we don't really say coccyx jolly. I, you could say coccygoalgia, coxalgia. You could say that gets messed up though, okay. Appendicular cells. Arms, appendicular, the appendices, okay, the arms, legs, the pelvic girdle, um, da -da -da -da, scapula, bones, different bones, the arm, we've gone through those, we've gone through pelvis, patella, if there's any that you don't understand, like metatarsus or metatarsal, metatarso, 
Okay, those are phalanges, phalanx. Phalanx has me like pokey thing. That's what it means. Phalanx. Phalanx is, is what um, the, it was a kind of, of way that the Roman, Roman, Roman soldiers, the centurions and those guys would, would organize their groups into a phalanx, go through the enemy lines, whatever. Um, different muscles and tendons. We talked about those. Origin and insertion are important. Origin is always going to be closer to the midline and more proximal, okay? Proximal along the body, okay? Proximal. And the insertions are always going to be distal and they're going to be lateral, something like that, okay? That way you can understand them a little better. Posterior view of the muscles, we go over those as well. Otherwise, um, some interesting one, buccinator. Mm -mm, right there, that's the buccinator. Helps you push food back over the teeth so the tongue can push the food back over the teeth and then you can crush them down. Uh, naming conventions of muscles, location, where the muscle is. So you have anterior and posterior and inferiors and things like that. Those words will tell you where it is, right? Lateralis and medialis and things like that. Number of insertions, that's gonna get your biceps and your triceps, okay? And your quadriceps kind of muscles. Size, you're going to get into things like vastus, which is wide, uh, brevis, which is short, longus, which is long, um, and uh, uh, what are the sh sizes? Uh, minimus, small, okay? Uh, shapes, you get different shapes in here. A rhomboid is a rhomboid shape, it's kind of like a, like a smash triangle. Uh, deltoid, which is a, um, another, is a triangle, actually, a, a smashed rectangle would be a, a rhomboid. And there's some others in there. So um, soleus can be that kind of shape. And splenius is kind of like a pear shape, actually. Muscle action, is it an adductor, a uh, flexor, an extensor? And then the origin insertion, it may be a, a sternocleidomastoid. So sternum, clavicle, mastoid. Origin, origin, insertion. Okay. And insertion, th those should tell you also how it moves. So it'll pull the insertion towards the origin. So that's the, 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 the sternocleidomastoid, SEM, pulls towards that area. And that tells you a lot about those. So this is a good one. Hey, there it is right there. Okay. So it pulls down from uh, the origin or anchor is more medial, right? And more proximal. We see that. And then the, the mastoid process is more distal and more further away or whatever, okay? Muscle actions, extension, flexion, lots of good ones to know here. Abduction and adduction, AD to add to. And most people say, a, a, B, they don't say abduction, which you can, you say abduction, so you don't get it messed up because people go adduction, adduction, abduction, sounds the same. Depends on your, your, your oh, maybe your, your uh, what's it called, your accent too. So supination and pronation, soup, you can hold a bowl of soup and pro, you can hold a basketball like a pro. That's what that means. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion only has to do with the feet, of course, because you're going to the dorsum of the foot or towards the plants, okay? Uh, eversion and inversion, you can do a little bit of eversion and inversion, but those are rotational things in the wrist. Uh, rotation is this way, circumduction is this way, okay? They don't really show that there. Okay, so you rotate your neck or you can rotate here. This is rotation and this can be circumduction going in a circle. You can do that with a lot of, of different muscles, actually, a lot of different uh, joints. Protraction and retraction, mm, no, 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 those are, that's actually incorrect. So what we should have is protraction is this, mm, and retraction, uh, or retraction, protraction, retraction, protraction. Retra uh, protraction, retraction, protraction, retraction. It's not the, it's not the, the, the leg, that's not correct. Uh, that's flexion and extension. I don't know why those are that way, uh, but don't worry about it, now you know, okay? Recognize these terms related to pathology, bad things. Achondroplasia, A, without chondro, uh, that's, that's cartilage, right? And plasia, development, without development of cartilage. Achondroplastic dwarfism is actually what that is. These are, these are small people, okay? And usually they'll have, they'll have different shaped kind of arms and legs. They'll be bowed a little bit. That's a, a typical presentation of that kind of thing. Muscular dystrophy, the muscles don't grow for some reason. And we used to have what we called March of Dimes, which was for muscular dystrophy. It was a very common problem in kids, but it was very confusing because it could be uh, confused with polio and some of those kind of things too. So. It's all changed these days. As we get better with diagnosing, which we talked about diagnosing, if I know what the sequelae are and all that kind of stuff, we, we get more information in there, okay? Uh, polydactyly, ooh, you have extra fingers. Syndactyly, they're fused together. Dactyle, okay, fingers. Um, 
spina bifida occulta. Okay, that's where the spine in the back on the on the the spine of the lower back is bifid, which means the 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 spinous process, which you can feel up here, has not joined together. They're split. Okay, uh, talipes is a foot problem, like club foot, and then torticollis is called right neck. I get this way. That's not really a uh, torticollis can be, but a lot of times it has to do with presentation during the birth process. Um, you know, getting adjusted for little kids or getting physical therapy will help with those kind of things too. You don't, you don't see, you rarely see someone with a condition like that that continues on for life. Okay. Um, related to bone disease, osteodynia, osteitis, deformans, deformed. Osteitis deformans is a neat one, scary one actually. If little babies get it and, and, um, they can get uh, chondromalacia patella and stuff like that. Weird things. Do we have it in here? Osteomalacia. Osteomalacia is softening of the bones. Rickets. Rickets or rickets is sometimes caused from a vitamin D deficiency. Uh, osteomyelitis, like, a, like an inflammation or an uh, infection in the bone. Osteoporosis and osteopenia. Penia is softening. Osteoporosis, the bones are porous and liable to break very easy. Chondromalacia, softening of the chondro and costochondritis is. <clears throat> Costo, as I cough, is, is the ribs, okay? And chondritis is the uh, cartilage that attaches to ribs, gets inflamed and hurts and can hurt all the way back. In a chiropractic world, we say it's a rib out of place, but some people, you know, it can cause other problems. There's a tsetse syndrome is what it's also called. Arthropocies and related sort of bunions has to do with the foot, carpal tunnel in the wrist. There's a little bunch of bones in here, which we go over, I think, in another video. And I show you the way they are. There's a wrist video that I have in my playlist. You can see that. And we talk about carpal tunnel. TMJ or temporal mandibular joint disorder. Uh, nathalgia, GNAF, see, G-N, NAF, nathalgia. Um, that's jaw pain, pain with chewing. Okay. Terms related arthropathies, osteoarthritis, Wear and tear is what that is. Okay, degenerate DJD is wear and tear over time. Rheumatoid arthritis. The difference is, is rheumatoid arthritis is a, is a a um, autoimmune disorder where the 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 joints break down always symmetrically. So both sides bilateral symmetrically. So the same thing on both sides. See so big knuckles or something like that. And it presents on both sides. If it doesn't present on both sides, it's something else. Okay, it's a diagnostic pearl, I suppose you'd say. Terms related arthropathies more, arthrosis, it's, it, it fused together. I've seen that happen in people. Um, I'll tell a whole story about that at some other time. Baker's cyst have to do with behind the knee. Bursitis is, you can get those anywhere in the shoulder, in the hip. Crepitus is crunchiness, usually related to um, a fracture. You move around, crunch, crunch, crunch. But it can also be like, you know, some people, they move their head around, it goes, that's the same kind of thing. Osteophytosis or osteophytes. Okay, you've heard of stalagmites and stalactites. Stalactites hang on the top and stalagmites are on the bottom. They hang on tight, right? And then we have osteophytes. Okay, fights are like, uh, osteophytes are like little little bone spurs is what they are. Scleroderma. Okay, your, your skin gets hardened. Okay, that process. There's that SLE, systemic Systemic lupus erythematosus. What it does is they get a, a rash through here and sometimes they'll see it in through the ear too. It'll get darker inside there. Um, that is an autoimmune issue and can cause problems with the kidneys and the liver and stuff like that too. Tendinitis, inflammation of the tendons. Very simple, okay. Back pain, okay, come on. Having some problems here. Dorsalgia, no one ever uses that term. So you can even forget it. Lumbago, occasionally. Lumbalgia, occasionally. Cervicalgia, yes. That's neck pain, okay? Mal curvatures, bad, mal, bad, curve, the curve, you know what curve is, right? Scoliosis, lordosis, and kyphosis. Now, there's problems with those words too, because a lordosis, a lordosis is a normal curve of the neck, right? It's called a cervical lordosis and the low back. Those are called secondary curves. You develop them as babies when you start lifting your head and looking around and walking, that kind of thing. Kyphosis is a primary curve. And so it's like, it's bent this way. Now, hyperkyphosis is too much. Kyphosis is a normal curve. You know, it's weird because people have a miscombobulation of those terms too. Ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis is an autoimmune kind of disease. It's a, it's a genetic disorder. It's an HLA, human leukocyte antigen 
B27 is what you get the blood test for to get that one. And that one used to be considered fatal by the time you're 35. But here I am, my late mid fifties, whatever it is. And uh, I, I was diagnosed with that. So I, I have that herniated intervertebral disc. There's different parts of the disc, okay, that can either bulge, rupture, herniate, sequester, all kinds of things. Spondylolisthesis has to do with the lower back mostly, okay, lumbar spine, and things will um, kind of fall apart in those. Just checking my, my stuff here. Spinal stenosis inside the spine, the spinal canal where the, the um, uh, what's it called? The spinal cord goes down in inside that bone and each bone down it goes through. It's about the spinal cord itself is about the size of your pinky in most places, a little bit smaller. Um, and it goes only to L1. So if you look at that, the first lumbar vertebra, and then it branches off into a thing called the cauda equina, which we go over in nerve kind of stuff. And what happens is the, the, the bones will grow because they've been injured and they'll grow and become a little bit more crowded in those areas. And spondylosis is usually a degenerative issue. It just means spine, spine problem. Okay. Muscle disorders, contracture. Ooh, it's like contracted up. You see that sometimes on people. Fibromyalgia. So let's look at the word muscle, maya, algia, pain, fiber, fibro, muscle fiber pain. It's, it's a syndrome. Okay, it's not a disease process because it turns out differently for everybody, which we talked about. Myasthenia gravis is a problem with the muscles becoming progressively weaker and tightened. Uh, it's generally considered fatal. Okay, plantar fasciitis, not fatal, but you want to kill yourself if your feet hurt that bad. It's the fascia along the feet. Um, more times than not, in my experience, it's related to the ankle, the calf, and the low back. Okay, and feet too. If you're standing on concrete a lot, uh, y'all nurses or whoever you are, if you're working in that kind of world, you need good shoes. Okay, good shoes are things. Poly polymyositis, many muscles uh, and bones have problems. That's what that means, inflammation. Okay, post laminectomy syndrome. This is, okay, this used to be called um, failed back surgery syndrome. So they did a lamin, okay, ectomy means to take out. The lamina is a part of the, the lumbar vertebra. And this is after having a syndrome that occurs after having that part of the bone removed. Okay. Rhabdomyolysis. This is a very bad thing. This can happen when your when your muscles start breaking down. It's very rare. Uh, kind of like there's some cancers that can do that, but those are super, super rare. Most commonly, and I just had a patient with this that had um, a, a statin drug and a statin drug is for um, cholesterol. And he took this stuff and it just started breaking down his muscles. And now he has to stop that medication, find something else and hope not to continue to degrade. In terms related to trauma, you can have different kinds of fractures or breaks. Okay. That's what they're called. Closed or open. Open means the bone sticking out. Okay. And that's not really bad. Those used to be called compound, but they're not called compound anymore. A compound is like, there's lots of pieces in some place. You know, so pathologic means you had cancer or some disease process going on. Comminuted has, it means a community, a community of bones, crush, uh, compression, smash down. Okay. You jump off a tree, land on your feet, get a compression fracture. A collis fracture is in the ankle. Okay. Uh, and then a complicated fracture. Well, those aren't the easy ones. It's a lot of different parts to it. Okay. Um, impacted again, if you jumped off a tree, hairline, very small, very hard to see. You have to see them on x-rays. Generally an x-ray, if you've taken um, x-rays of people or had an x-ray done, if you get it done right after an injury, you might not even see the fracture because the fracture takes about eight days to present unless it's like, you know, pop. But if it's like a crack, you may take about a few days to see what's going on there. Salter Harris is a different kind of uh, fracture. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Systems, re terms related to trauma, sprain. Okay. Sprain has to do with the ligaments. Strain has to do with the muscles. You usually have a sprain strain issue. Dislocation, common things dislocate, toes, uh, uh, knees sometimes, fingers, very common, uh, shoulders, probably the most common. Subluxation, luxation means to move apart. Okay, so like a dislocation and a, a small, it's almost like part of a dislocation. Compartment syndrome is when it compartmentalizes and gets swollen up inside there. It's not a very good issue to have. Benignant. Okay, so benign neoplasms. Neoplasm means new growth, and that's like a cancer. 
Okay, benign means that it's non-harmful. It's not going to kill you. Like malignant means it's going to kill you. Here's different ones: exostosis, bone growing out of the place it shouldn't, where it shouldn't be. Okay, in other tissue, osteoma. That's a bone tumor. Chondroma. That's a cartilage tumor. Leomyoma. That has to do with the um, uh, usually the spine, like the spinal cord. Okay, rhabdomyoma. Again, very rare. This is a, a muscle one. So notice there's like three words now for muscle. We have rhabdo, we have sarco, and we have myo. Okay, myo is the most common though. Malignant, osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. So osteo, sarc, so it has a little bit of that tissue in there too. That's a sarco thing. Chondrosarcoma, leomyosarcoma, rhabdomyosarcoma. Uh, congenital disorders. Well, you can find congenital disorders in anyone, but usually they're presented early on as their babies. Okay. And then trauma. Everybody can have trauma. Right. Old well, person fall down the stairs. Geriatric or old people. Right. Pediatrics are young people. Osteoarthritis. You're not going to see that in little people. Young people. Osteoporosis. Also not unless there's another disease process going on. Fractures you can see in both. Cancers you can see in both, okay? You're gonna see more common cancers in elders and more common fractures in elders uh, because some may argue that uh, when a baby is born, they have about 300 bones, if you count them out that way, because they haven't fused together and they're not even ossified yet. So they're still mostly cartilage, like a hyaline cartilage. And uh, it takes a little while for them to develop, okay? First one that's, that's ossified is the collarbone. Uh, last is in the pelvis. And that's one of the ways you can do dating on a, on a skeletal uh, skeletal remains. You find some remains, you can see where, okay, like th these parts have been ossified and turned to bone, solid, mature bone, and other ones haven't. Uh, as we're ending here, arthrography, uh, measuring the joints. Arthroscopy, looking at the joints. CT scans, computed tomography. Uh, DEXA, you'd have to look that one up. Electromyography, we've seen that one. That's a really interesting one. It, 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 I used to have them done at the office for people who had muscle weakness and muscle fatigue and, and uh, unexplained muscle stuff. It's very good. So if you had rhabdomyolysis or something, it helped you diagnose that. Um, but I don't, I don't, I haven't used it really. MRI, use all the time. I love them. MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. You can see soft tissues in different ways and shapes. A myelogram, uh, same kind of thing. You're looking at the bone marrow. Okay. Milo kind of insinuates bone marrow, but it can go to Leo Mayo or something like that, which would be like, like uh, brain tissue or, or, or nerve tissue. Okay. A x-rays, radiographs. I think we did a whole thing on that. Uh, Rankin was the guy's name. Mess everything up by having to pronounce his last name. Terms related other tests. Phalanx test is this one, which tests for uh, carpal tunnel this way and reverse phalans. These guys, if it hurts, you could have carpal tunnel or wrist pain. Okay, RF test rheumatoid R factor. Rheumatoid factor is, um, uh, where's phalans test this one? This is, oh, Finkelstein's is this one. There's a bunch of orthopedic tests we got to know too. So, I mean, you guys don't have to, but I have to know them. I know, I mean, here's a whole book I have just of uh, orthopedic tests, an entire giant book here. Look at that, all kinds of all kinds of stuff you can see in there. Every orthopedic test known to man. Uh, and this has neuro and physiological ones too. Serum calcium, you're checking how much calcium is in the blood. Range of motion, that's, you know, you write them down based on previous encounters. And goniometry is another way to measure more specifically range of motion. Uh, terms related to setting fractures. Ugh. Malunion and non-union. So if you break a bone and it doesn't heal, that's what happens. It doesn't heal well together. It doesn't union, meet together, or bad union. Okay, malunion or non-union. Sequestrum, they're all stuck together. Debridement, you get in there and have to um, uh, uh, scrape apart the stuff you don't want. Reductions, open and closed reductions, that has to do with the kind of fracture, you know, open or closed fractures. In terms of the therapeutic innovation, amputation. Wow, that's it? What about massage therapy, man? <laughs> amputation or prosthesis. Amputation is cutting off a limb. Prosthesis is making a new one. You get a peg leg. That's a prosthesis. In terms related to therapeutic interventions, 
Um, the prostheses are getting amazing. They have uh, computerized ones that almost look like an actual hand or, or something like that and can move based on brain activity, which is incredibly cool to see that happen. Uh, bunionectomy, have your bunion removed, which is down on your feet, osteoclasses. There's another different one, osteoplasty, for fixing your bones. And traction, they put you in traction. You've seen those pictures of, you know, they have a bunch of people broken and they hold them up and they're strung to the ceiling like this. And what those do is those have to pull and uh, keep the traction on the muscles so the muscles will relax and let the bone heal properly. Now we use medicines for that. Uh, therapeutic kyphoplasty, that has to do with the curvature. I have a patient that had that. She has what are called Harrington rods uh, and spondylosynthesis. They just fuse the bones in the back or the neck. I wouldn't suggest that on anybody unless you fell out of a tree or was hit by a train or something like that, because, you know, they, they, more often than not, you're going to need more. That's going to be terrible. Uh, arthrocentesis, arthrodesis, arthroplasty, meniscus, oh, meniscus. Okay, meniscus is a part of the knee, Menisca, meniscectomy. Syndesmoplasty and ten myoplasty. This has to do with the fixing of the um, different joints get fixed that way. Translated therapeutic, total hip replacement, THR, and total knee replacement. Uh, if you look those videos up on total knee replacement, they are the most violent things ever. They're using like hammers and stuff on people. It's rough, but it's amazing how fast people can recover from those. I've seen people recover in a few days and, and back out walking in three or four days. It's incredible. Sometimes same day. Uh, analgesics help you get rid of pain, anti-inflammatories, that's be like Tylenol and stuff like that, reduce inflammation, okay? Anti-rheumatics, these help with rheumatoid arthritis and stuff like that. Biophosphates, a different kind of, uh, this is a lipid-based stuff. And that's about it, guys. We're going to go with that. That's the whole thing. <clears throat> I will talk to you guys later. Stop the share. We'll go down here and uh, let's see if it works. Talk to you later.